Hey everyone, for those of you who don't know us, my name's Shane. And I'm Claire. And this is the tour of our off-grid Toyota Coaster home. So the first thing when you walk in is our big spacious lounge. Uh, it was built for comfort and so it could be an additional single bed. Uh, all the cushions are modular so that we can access storage underneath. Uh, under here is where our hot water system lives, uh, snorkeling gear and Claire's art supplies. Um, under the ottoman part of our lounge is where the condenser for our split system air conditioner is, as well as a little area for our cats to sleep. So above our lounge is some overhead storage. This hides the ducting for the original uh, Toyota Coaster air conditioner. And it's where we sort of keep uh, some commonly accessed tools like a screwdriver and a wrench for the gas bottles, as well as like computer equipment, uh, camera gear, and our uh, Dyson vacuum cleaner. So as you enter the bus and walk into the kitchen is sort of our control panel. You've got the main light switch, which does the front and middle lights. You've got our battery monitor, which you can cycle through and it tells you how much you're charging, what your battery percentage is, yeah, all that good stuff. This is our uh, Victron inverter control system, so we can turn it on, off, or put it on charge all from here without actually having to access the device under the bed. Uh, switch for our hot water system, and then a switch for our water pump. We've also then got a key rack. We just hold our keys on. A little something that I couldn't live without. We've got a handrail here just to help people get in and out of the bus. Uh, fire extinguisher, and then just a shoe holder which also has our fire blanket in it. Moving further up, we have our monitor. So I use this primarily for work, but it's also what we generally watch TV and stuff on. We don't have an aerial or anything like that. We just plug the laptop in and watch Netflix or Nine Now or Seven Plus or that sort of thing. We then have a sound bar, which just gives us a bit better sound. It's sort of the smallest, best sound bar you can get that would fit in that size. We then have a table that folds up and down when it's not in use. Uh, so you just lift it up and pull the legs out and yeah. Okay, so now we get to move into the kitchen area. So this little section here, we built specifically to take our microwave and our fridge. So um, we'll start at the top. This is just excess storage, is where we put like our first aid kits and things like that. So if anything happens, we have all that handy. Next down, we built this section around our microwave. So it's an LG 25 liter Neo Chef microwave. It is a smart inverter, which means we can run it off of our solar system, so we don't need to plug in or anything like that to use it. 25 liters is the biggest sort of size we wanted to go for the bus because we didn't want anything too big, but we also wanted it to be decent, so works really well. Um, we then have our 175 liter Evercool upright fridge and freezer. So with the fridge and freezer, we decided to go um, with a well-trusted brand and this is one of the only ones that we found after doing some research that can actually freeze items and keep things cool above say 40 degrees we have had absolutely no problems with it whatsoever we can have ice cream um, and we've never had any problems with things not being able to get cool so yeah so now you get to move into the kitchen so everything here is our kitchen. We custom built the whole lot. We wanted it to look like home. So we wanted to get a nice sink, good proper oven and everything, which we'll go through. So our sink is um, a black granite sink with black tapware, which can come down, do all the dishes, hot cold water, the lot. Um, it's fairly deep, so which is good because it fits all your dishes, you know, you can put actually put pots and pans in, which is awesome. It's not shallow or anything like that. We then have all of our storage in our cupboards. So we'll give you a glimpse through there, but in all of the cupboards, we have sort of rolling drawers and runners, which makes it easier to access things. So moving right along, I'll show you this one as well. So that's where we keep all of our food salt, pepper, larger things down the bottom standing up. Okay, so this is our oven. It's a Thetford Caprice uh, Mark III. It's dual fuel and fan forced. 
Um, so we like this one because you've actually got the top, which you can use as extra bench space if you need to. So when you want to use it, you lift it up, you've got your three gas burners and then you want electric. So for whatever reason, if you don't have any gas, you can use the electric one. We actually haven't used the electric one at all. And then you've got your grill and your oven. The oven actually has quite a decent space in it. We've cooked, we cook everything in there. We cook pizzas, we cook roasts, we cook the whole lot in there. So it's been awesome and we're really, really happy with it. The last cupboard that we have here holds our bin and our step. Our step is to jump up onto the bed. Well, for me anyway, because I'm a bit shorter. Um, and it also holds our cutlery drawer. So again, that was all custom built. Um, with the kitchen as well, we now have our above storage where we where we store all of our sort of pantry food that doesn't need to go in the fridge and stuff like that. Um, we like this because it's so open. So rather than having sort of closed off cupboards and another thing blocking, it's beautiful, it's open and easily accessible. So that's pretty much our kitchen and uh, yeah, we're really happy with it. Alrighty, so opposite our kitchen is our bathroom. So this is our shower and toilet combo. So again with this one, we got all black tapware to match all of the kitchen and the sink and everything like that. Our toilet is the Dometic CTS 4110 cassette toilet. Um, it uses the water from our water tanks and our pump to be able to flush the toilet. We haven't had any issues whatsoever with the cassette toilet. Um, there's plenty of dump points around, you know, RV parks and everything like that and heaps around a lot of small towns in particular. Uh, and it really hasn't been too bad. So some of the hardware in our shower cubicle. So the towel rail, the shampoo and conditioner holder and also our toothbrush holder their vacuum suction they're really awesome you're supposed to redo them you know every couple months or whatever but we've never had to redo them they don't fall off they take a lot of weight so we found them to be awesome they also come with like a 10 year warranty so they're fantastic um and yeah that's pretty much our shower toilet combo next to our shower is our closet so on the front we just have a mirror and a whiteboard and then if we open it up, so in here, a bit more pantry storage, sort of the bigger stuff. Then we have another sliding thing that has like Claire's hair straightener. This is where we keep our deodorants and you know, sort of all of our toiletry stuff. And then some cleaning supplies in the back. We then have our laundry hamper, as well as some hanging storage. Uh, and then just a few more bits and pieces like jewelry attached to the door. So moving on from that, we have a couple of shelves next to our bed, mainly just books. Uh, and this is like where we might put our phones or something at night. A uh, couple of art supplies, not much. Another light switch and our aircon remote. So the aircon, turn around, sits over the bed there. Uh, again, we can run it off our solar system, which is the reason we designed the solar system the way that we did, so that we could have a split system air conditioner. Uh, because otherwise it's just ridiculously hot in Australia if you don't have some form of air conditioning. So then we have our bed. So it's a little higher than what you might be used to, but that's because we put heaps of storage underneath. So underneath here is where we put all of our clothes. And then in the back, which we'll show you later, is where we have our electrical system. And it's kind of like our garage storage for our tools and that sort of thing. Uh, it also can lift up so that we can access some of the electrical system. Uh, we keep our shopping bags here uh, as well as change our water tanks over. Our mattress is an Ecosa double mattress. So good thing about Toyo Coaster, fits a double mattress perfectly uh, east-west. And the Ecosa mattress, mattress in a box, it's one of the most comfiest mattresses I think I've ever slept on uh, and it makes it super easy to get into a bus which is pretty good. Alrighty so now onto the outside of the bus. So this is the access hatch for our Suburban SW6DEA hot water system. It's gas and electric um, and we think it's around 20 litre. So we haven't had any problems at all with our hot water system. We love it depending on how cold it is outside it probably only takes about 15 minutes to heat up based on gas. So, yeah. Now we'll move on to our door. So this is our Aussie Travelers uh, caravan door, which we've custom fitted for our Toyota Coaster. 
The thing that we love about this door is on the outside, it provides permanent ventilation, which in New South Wales is a requirement if you've got gas inside of your motorhome. The other thing that we love though, is that you can actually have a little latch inside and you can separate the doors so that while ever you're, you know, just camping or sitting around or whatever, you can actually have this door open, which we normally latch to a little uh, loop thing that we've attached over there. And you've got your fly screen, so no insects or anything like that are coming in. So the door's been really good. Um, yeah. So moving further along the bus, we now have a external power outlet. So if we want to, this is where we can plug power from inside the bus to use it on something outside. So particularly when we've been working on it, actually we've used this for a few tools and stuff like that, but otherwise we haven't really needed to use it. We then have a DC power outlet, which again is if we want to use the power from inside the bus, so our solar power for using it on something on the outside. Again, we haven't used that at all though, but it's still handy to have. This little baby down here is a hatch to access our uh, 24 volt R2 bus batteries from the external of the bus. So they're actually located underneath our fridge on the inside. So rather than having to pull the fridge out and everything like that to access them, all you do is unlock it down here, lift it up, these little latches hold it into place and you can access the batteries. So super handy to have and has been good. Moving further along, this is our external table. So it's got two little locking clips that hold it up into place whenever you're traveling. All you do is get the key, twist them, pull it down, and you have a table outside. So it's really good when you're sitting around, you know, you've got your chairs out, and you can put your drinks up, stuff like that. And um, definitely something that we really recommend purchasing and we've used it quite a lot. Okay, now we have our 240 volt uh, inlet. So while we don't use it often and we mostly free camp and live off grid, because I need power for work, we had to have a backup. So, you know, if we need to, we can go to a caravan park and plug in and charge up that way. Uh, we've only used it a few times when it's been really hot. And, you know, if you run the air conditioner through the night, you're still gonna have issues. But most of the time, we don't need it. We then have a filler for one of our water tanks. So we've got one on each side to fill each 70 litre water tank. And they just sit up underneath the bus. They're custom made to fit a Toyota Coaster, which is awesome, and it keeps them you know, out of the way and not impacting any of your other storage. We also have a 70 litre grey water tank under the bus, and this just allows us to class as self-contained. So now if we go around the back, we have a Fiamma bike rack, which Claire has an electric bike, and I just have a sort of cheap push bike uh, that we carry around with us. Because we don't tow a vehicle or anything like that, we just have the bikes that we can duck down to town without having to pack the bus up if we need to. And then we'll open up the doors and we'll go from there. So something that's really cool about our Toyota Coaster, which is not standard, is this sort of clamshell door. Because it used to have a wheelchair lift, uh, yeah, it opens up and gives us heaps of space underneath the bed. So this is the main reason we built the bed as high as we did. And this is where we keep chairs, levelers. We've got a couple of tubs of tools and like clothes. So when it's summer, we put winter clothes in there. When it's winter, we put summer clothes in there as well as some like work clothes for me. We then also have coolant, oil. We also have fishing rods, a jack, you know, the tools to get our wheels off, all that sort of thing. It's also where we access our electrical system. So I made a detailed video on our electrical system, which I'll link up the top. But the gist is we have two 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium batteries in series, which gives us 200 amp hours at 24 volts. We then have three 305 watt solar panels that feed into that, which gives us our off-grid electrical system, which has been flawless. It's been awesome and I said other than a few times where we've had to plug in because of ridiculous Australian heat, we haven't had any issues. Uh, we then have a Vic Victron solar controller and a Victron inverter slash uh, 240 volt charger. Uh, 
So that's the gist of what's in here. Last side of the bus, we have our uh, hatch for our gas bottles. So we have two four kilo gas bottles, which we carry around. And this has our hot water system and our um, gas stove. Again, we wanted to go multiple fuels and then a lot of the things that we have uh, have redundant electrical as well so that we have a lot of options so that we can stay off grid as much as possible. We then have our other water filler for our other 70 litre water tank as well as a inlet for mains water. Again, we don't go to caravan parks often so we don't really use it but we've got the option in case we need it. Then have our hatch for our toilet. So this is just where you can pull the cassette out, empty it up, put the cassette back in. Fairly standard. So last thing is we've replaced our Toyota Coaster condenser with a split system air conditioner condenser and we just put it same spot so it uses the same vent. Uh, we pretty much used the same brackets and then just sort of welded a shelf together for it and that's just where it sits. And then there's not much to talk about in the cab. Uh, we do carry some wheel chocks back here. We have a my camera bag, my work bag, and then we added a seven inch Sony Android head unit that attaches to a reverse camera at the back. Uh, this is attached to a switch in the dash so that we can turn it on whenever we want. So when we're driving down highways and stuff, we often turn it on so that we can see what's behind us better. Another part of our lounge is because a Toyota Coaster doesn't have a passenger door, and we built the lounge across the back of the seats is you can pull this cushion, middle cushion up and then fold this middle section down, put the cushion back on and it allows you to climb to and from the house and the cab. Alrighty, so another thing on this side of the bus that we've got as well, is just a four wheel drive awning up here. So it's really simple. All you do is unzip it, it rolls out, the legs drop down, arms go across it to support it. It is two and a half meters by three meters. So it just provides heaps of extra outdoor space. So typically if we are set up somewhere for a few days, we'll get it out. We'll uh, use pegs and ropes to stick it into the ground, chuck some chairs out and a ground cover and you're good to go. So definitely good if you are gonna be wanting that extra outdoor space. Alrighty, so that's the end of our tour for our Toyota Coaster home. Uh, so all of the build of the bus is on our YouTube channel so if you want to know anything more or how we did something check out that conversion series we also have some videos of us traveling around in the home and once we can travel again uh, we'll be putting more videos up so make sure to subscribe for more content and like and share this video thanks see ya